Sam Cedar about the drama today at the 128 mark. What drama? Hey, um, I'm not the biggest Pete Buttigieg fan, um, but he was the mayor of South Bend, Indiana. The book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Call him. For- uh, well, um, just uh, so I've, I've. Uh, sorry, I'm like really nervous. <laughs> um, I'm calling because I've seen like a lot of really crazy mudslinging uh, towards one of my favorite uh, content creators, whom I know you have a good relationship uh, as well with, Hassan Piker. And um, for I'm not sure. If Damn, he's going. He's been- going straight to Unk, dude. He's going straight to Unk. That's Unk. That's my uncle. Everybody, calm down. And keeping up with it because it's sort of like this intersectionality between like political commentators and like random crappy YouTube drama. But uh, and I know that you also have a relationship or have uh, been on the H D podcast. So uh, anyway, just to give like this spiel really quickly, if you haven't heard of it, uh, Ethan Klein sort of has that this like crazy campaign against Hassan lately. Um, insinuating that his uh, fan base is anti-Semitic and that he's uh, allowing this sort of uh, area of his community to exist um, and just going above and beyond to um, <clears throat> to uh, make the most bad faith arguments in order to like uh, perpetuate this narrative. And it's really like been personally upsetting to me specifically because here's this guy um, who... I'm sorry, I'm like really fucking ner- yeah, no, really nervous. Doing good. Here's this guy who's like uh, defended uh, Palestinian uh, uh, the Palestinian people for so long, way before uh, like this year, like for years and years and years. Uh, I myself, I'm a Jewish person. I went on birthright when I was 19, and I was radicalized by birthright unplugged. Um, so I was able to see what was going on in the occupied West Bank at the time. And it was particularly upsetting to me. So, um, yeah, no, I guess the reason I'm calling is because I'm just curious if you um, are aware of what's going on. Because for me, it's just so personally upsetting to see this happen to someone that I feel like has been so staunchly uh, in the right place with this issue being brutally attacked by people whom I viewed as being like figureheads of like a progressive movement, people like Ethan Klein, uh, other YouTubers as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I heard, I, 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 I have not followed this closely. I've seen like, you know, uh, and I'm on Twitter less and less these days, but I've definitely seen touches of it on Twitter. And I, I don't know if it was like last week or when, uh, Hassan, uh, you know, had texted me that he was, that he, he, he found this whole thing upsetting. Um, and, uh, you know, all I can tell you is right now, it seems like we have entered a stage where s- strong supporters of Israel, ones who I would say have been, you know, really intensely in denial as to what Israel is doing and what it's become. And put aside, a, you know, the, the, the question of like, uh, for, for the moment, for the sake of this uh, argument uh, or this situation, the, the founding of Israel as being highly problematic. Um, just, just take this past year in isolation if nothing, if, if, if there had been no history whatsoever, if this was completely outside of a context, there's just simply no way. And, 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 I, and I think the context actually does not make it any more favorable for Israel. I think quite the opposite. But let's just assume for a moment that this, is only, this only happened on October 7th. Uh, that Hamas came over. They uh, uh, they broke through. They killed somewhere between 600 and 800 civilians, uh, and then anywhere between you know uh, three or 400 uh, uh, military personnel, which is the case. Um, the idea that this is a proportionate response, the killing of at a minimum. I mean, I don't think there's. 
Hassan has become an L. <sighs> the thing I don't understand about that kind of sentiment is that like, if you consider me to be an L now, then it's, I didn't become that. Like I've always been this L because the one thing is, uh, the one thing it's me. I'm the one who called. Yes. I'm the chatter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the thing is like, I'm pretty consistent, especially on stuff like this. Right. So I think that uh, it's not necessarily that I have become an L. I think maybe your opinion changed on the matter. And that deserves some, I think, self-reflection. And I'm always going to be open-minded. I'm always going to be open-minded to uh, people who change their minds. Maybe you changed your mind in the opposite direction. Uh, but I will still hold out hope that you will one day be charitable again to the things that I'm saying. I haven't really, like, I haven't really changed my framework, my, my perception, my attitude on the way that Israel operates. The only thing that I've turned into an L on is the size of the t-shirts that I wear. I used to wear triple XL and now I wear larges. So I guess on that front, you are right. There's any sort of reasonable individual that thinks it's less than, uh, you know, 40,000 plus uh, people and that you know we know that almost two-thirds of this is women and children we know that there have been thousands of 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 kids underneath the age of like two who have been killed i don't think there's anybody um i mean even without the context this just looks like war crime after war crime uh, may i ask a question sam yeah uh, so, uh, getting to that point, like, I think what's particularly upsetting about this, like, obviously the entire situation. I am a bullprog called in and talk about their criticisms of you. Okay. It's incredibly upsetting and it's one of the most horrendous things that I hope I'll ever have to witness, uh, in my life. Um, but I think what's particularly upsetting, like I mentioned before, is seeing people whom I previously thought were fairly progressive become like radicalized against this issue and um well you know of, uh, i mean listen up you were that were that are so much worse with their bad faith arguments and i'm i wonder if you think it's more about that just like this hits home for them in a weird way where they're yes. able this to is, like well, that's, that their was disbelief. The, that was the the point that i was trying to make it's like I feel like we have hit an, a, a stage of this now mm -hmm. where it is so horrific, it is so obvious yeah. that even without yeah, you can't even, even you can't even acknowledge it. We, even horrible. without context, that the the to remain in denial, you need to go further, right? Like you can't yeah. hunker down. You need to go on the offense. I will tell you this: I had a guy, you know, family friend of my father's age, who called him this week and asked if I was an anti-Semite. Yeah, so this is like, this is, ironically enough, the reason why I wanted Sam to talk to Ethan as well, because this is like getting too into, in a very public fashion, but getting too into like inter-community conversations, okay? Like, you know how sometimes we open the door? You know how sometimes we open a door and peek into black people's business? This is Jewish people's business uh, to a certain degree. Like the way that uh, American Jews analyze Israel and, uh, and, and the opinions that they have, like this is a, a inside baseball conversation almost. Like I understand why that chatter is frustrated because he's like recognizing the cognitive dissonance demonstrated by people who he recognizes a were progressive who have like um who have uh, gone through uh, a, a genuine attitude change right and 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 yet that attitude change has like limits in terms of the analysis um i think that it's just slightly parasocial i don't think so because like i talk to i have two different camps here right i have like hardline anti-Zionist Jewish friends who are very close friends of mine, as you guys know, who I love and have so much uh, respect for, who have already, who have already had these opinions very publicly for a very long time. And then there are a lot of young Jewish Hassanabi heads that I talk to who have basically gone through this journey into anti-Zionism and that the, the, communal attitudes that are reflected uh back at them like the the like the push and pull 
basically, of your own personal convictions on this matter versus the way that your immediate family members treat you and your sense of community basically being robbed from you because of your difference in opinion on this matter because of how many uh how many of these communities are built around the concept of like defending israel i think that's a real that's a real issue sense of community lamau no i mean it's true what do you mean you can't say that like sense of community lamau there's there are plenty of anti-zionist jews who um there are plenty of anti-zionist jews who literally are just like dude i don't know what to do like you know you have hillel on campus you have all these like jewish groups on campus and they straight up are like oh are you uh, anti-israel you you're a token get out of here like you get excommunicated like a like a mormon to be clear i've been pro-passing since i since I did Birthright Unplugged at 19, I'm 33 now, but it's upsetting because I saw firsthand the propaganda. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm talking specifically about like, like when I go to the encampments and stuff and I talk to the students there, one of the most common things I heard from uh, Jewish students at the encampment was like, you know, you, you have no, you, you, you basically don't have the same like um, community resources all of a sudden because like, it, it's just, they take that shit away from you. You're like not a part of it. You know, you have to be pro-Israel. And I feel like, um, I feel like that's a, that's a frustrating situation and I haven't been able to find it like a good solution to that at all when people ask me that question. I do understand how that would be. I can understand how that would feel. That sense of isolation uh, is, is going to be something that is, is damaging to your psyche for sure. Like I, I get that. I just, I don't know. I, um, this is 100% going to be clip chimped. Wait, why? Well, I didn't say anything. I did not say anything even remotely inappropriate here. I'm talking about my own personal experiences talking to anti-Zionist Jews that are housed out of heads at college encampments. Like if they, if they, you know, if people clip this out of context to say that this is anti-Semitic, then so be it. Like I've been getting called a terrorist every goddamn day. I've been getting called uh, an Islamist fundamentalist terrorist every I think the best phrase to describe the thing that myself and a lot of other fellow Jewish house and heads is internalized shame. And it's something that I struggle with every day. I literally feel ostracized in my Jewish friends every day because of my beliefs. I think the best phrase to describe it is internalized shame. Like, I don't think you should feel shame. I think that that is the social conditioning, right? I think that as a Jewish person, you should never feel shame about the actions of Israel. You should never, ever feel shame about the actions of Israel because it, it has nothing to do with you. It, it has nothing to do with you whatsoever. I understand where it comes from. I think it literally comes from like all of the social conditioning uh, from, uh, you know, early adolescent stages in your life and how like that sense of community and almost like a, and almost like a, like a higher national religious understanding in the form of like Zionist ideology has substituted maybe some of the practices that you could normally feel uh, that you normally would uh, uh, feel is, um, is, is a part of your culture, but I don't feel shame. I just feel dismayed that people who raise me aren't living by their own teachings is very upsetting. Yeah. You should never, you should never ever in a million years feel shame. If you're an American Jew, you should never, ever, ever feel shame uh, towards the actions of Israel. I, I will never allow it. Uh, Zionism is woven into Jewish communities for a very young age. It was taught to me at Hebrew school and amongst the word of the mouth. Yeah, exactly. But once again, this is why I always, this is why I always uh, talk about this issue. Like, I don't think a lot of people understand when I separate Zionism and Israel from Judaism across the board, I'm doing this because I see what the is going on. Okay. I'm doing this one because it's, it's the truth. Zionism is totally separate from Judaism. It does not matter if your local rabbi says that it isn't. Okay. It doesn't matter. You can voluntarily adopt this ideology because you think that this will, uh, you know, time will pass and you can use this as a, as a deflection to be like, oh, well, every Jewish person is, is ideologically and, and religiously tied to Israel. It doesn't matter. This is what's taught in Hebrew school or whatever, but like, and it's a part of my Jewish identity. It still doesn't matter because you are not recognizing that you are teaching people something that is wrong and not only is it wrong but it's also causing people to associate israel's actions with judaism when it is so far removed from judaism almost antithetical to the values that at least i have learned about judaism 
and Jewish culture and Jewish history. That may be a point of contention, though. Do you have the right to make that distinction as a non-Jewish person? Yeah, I, I, I understand that. I understand when people go, uh, people try to do like, well, it's, you know, my own ideology, my own choice, that type of thing. It's not because of Israel, it's because I'm shamed by my community for not being pro-Israel. I know this is a long shot, but I would also be more than welcome to guest star one day to talk about my upbringing and the constant struggle of being someone who is Jewish and anti-Israel. I know you've talked about this a billion times, but I still be open sometime if you want. I'm pretty sure Megaphonics will also be more than glad to do so as well. Yeah. I hate how insane everyone has become and it's impossible to talk to family I used to be friends with on holidays. I've seen too many dead babies. I literally burst out at any of my family when they bring up Israel like, I want my grandparents on Haifa dead. It's my fault for seeing Palestinians as humans. Yeah. Um, but like, I'm like... Sam himself has uh, is, is personally talking about his own experiences. Like people think people in his own community, in his own immediate circle of friends is like looking at him and assuming that he is like anti-Semitic or his opinion on Israel. And it's a very weird situation because like when people say white people are under attack in America or Christianity is under attack in America, we all understand that that's right. That is the oppressive group trying to do a reverse racism narrative. But with anti-Semitism, there is real anti-Semitism. There is actually a sense of marginalization that is valid. There is actually a genuine impact of anti-Semitism that, that is a canary for fascist ideology. So when that gets diluted with anti-Zionism in a very nefarious cycle that tries to associate all of the actions of Israel with Judaism, you are literally, without recognizing, telling people something that is objectively false, okay? Just like Saudi Arabia and its actions have nothing to do with Islam, okay? Or the rest of the Muslim world, Israel's actions have nothing to do with Judaism or, you know, how American Jews or Jews wherever they live in the world uh, and their day-to-day -day experiences. It has nothing to do with that. It is a state, right? It is a state built around an ethno and religious supremacist ideology that is built on top of an area where there are millions of indigenous people and tens of millions that have been displaced already. It has nothing, it's a, it's, it has nothing to do with Judaism across the board, no matter how hard people have packaged it as such. And it always feels like I'm going crazy when people associate it, when they are uh, either Jewish themselves or pro-Jewish, right? It's like, it's like hearing straight up a Muslim guy in the Western world be like, it, it, claiming that like ISIS is actually good for Islam and that ISIS actually is the true idea of Islam. It's like, what the f are you doing? Like, what are you saying? That's what it feels like. And I can't, you've made a turn, man, not a good path. Once again, I have not, especially on this issue. I have not. You either weren't paying attention in the past or your opinion most likely changed. Unless you can identify what the turn is, unless you can identify in your mind what the turn is, we can't have this, uh, we, we can't have like a normal conversation. It's just your vibes. In a Twitch chat, it's more nuanced than that. What? It just, you can give some, some talking points, I assume, I suspect. Right. Here's another story from Nandre. A little anecdotal, though. When I lived in Israel, many of the younger Israelis despise Zionism because they live inside it and saw the garbage effects it has on life. It's why it's such a frustrating dialogue over there. The West is so far removed from it and pushes it so hard. Yeah, that's the other. That definitely is the other aspect of it, too. I'm giving you the opportunity to speak up. So what Nandre said, it makes all the worse that Hebrew school teaches us about such a politically fraught and deep topic like Zionism at such a young age. And now tell us it's the Palestinians who indoctrinate their children who hate us. As though hating Palestinians isn't the obvious lesson of Zionist youth lessons, I cannot even reconcile that obvious cognitive dissonance with people who still believe that even in old age. Yeah, it's just you can point to uh, you can point to videos that I have on this topic, ironically enough, with the same exact people that I'm still talking to on the same exact subject matter from like eight years ago. You know what I mean? That's what's so funny about people being like, wow, you've changed. <sighs> I have not. You either weren't paying attention to what I was saying for the past almost decade, your perspective on the matter changed, and now you analyze what I'm saying with a very different lens. Again, it's more complex than can be said in a chat. You were literally asking me for talking points and I refuse. What? Okay, so what do you want? You just wanted to chirp? <clears throat> That's what it was? <laughs> You just wanted the wine. Is that what it was? I would hope anyone would change in 10 years. I mean, if, if society is unchanging, if society is unchanging on a lot of these issues, like why would you expect me to change my mindset to change? That doesn't make any point. That doesn't make any sense. 
Yes, I have been consistently, I've been consistently now for more than a decade been, uh, and even beyond that, but very publicly more than a decade been pro, pro immigration, right? Um, pro reform, uh, rehabilitation over incarceration when it comes to the criminal justice system. I have, and, and none of those structural problems have gone away. I have been uh, very critical of policing as an institution in this country. That has not changed, if not only gotten worse. So, and with respect to Israel, it's not like Israel 10 years ago was, was different. It was still an apartheid. And it still is like my core values uh, and, and the way that I understand the world have not shifted dramatically for most people, not just you. These people just started paying attention, not you. Yeah. Jesus Christ. And it's like, wait a second. First off, I'm not saying anything now that I haven't been saying for a year. Uh, and I've been critical increasingly over the years, to be fair. But starting in 2004, uh, when we did this show on uh, AM Talk Radio, we had the Israeli embassy contact our show, uh, you know, after our first segment about Israel, which was in, I don't know, uh, you know, second month of, of doing the show, um, because they were, they, you know, they wanted to refute our points. I mean, we were uh, critical of Israel. I think I just denounced terrorists. I do. Your voice speaks loud. Do with that what you will. I denounce terrorists every day. I denounce the terror state of Israel every day. I denounce America's actions that are state sponsored terror every day, every day. More critical as I've learned more about, uh, you know, uh... you know, people are still people, right? Like they're still human beings, whatever kind of thicker you associate with them does not change that dynamic. People understandably have a desire to live free. Okay. That is a normal human desire to have. If you understand that the standard of violence is set by the larger, more powerful party, which in this case would be the settler colonial country with nuclear arms that are getting endless amounts of funds and weapons from the largest superpower on the planet historically, then you have to recognize that the overarching harm, the larger harm, is always still coming from Israel. Israel is setting the standard of violence. The Nat Turner Rebellion, albeit incredibly violent, which included white people being slaughtered in their bedrooms, you know what I mean? did not change the morality of chattel slavery. It didn't. Just like the ANC's actions did not change the morality of the South African apartheid. When the dust settles, you will not look back at these situations, at these acts of violence resisting against, no matter how abhorrent they may be, okay? And October 7 had a tremendous amount of abhorrent acts of violence. Okay, specifically against civilians. When the dust is settled, uh, if there is truly a progressive slant to history, you will look back at that as a dark moment in history. But ultimately, the much larger harm will be accurately pointed to uh, in the and, and the much larger issue will be in the hands. The larger responsibility will be in the hands of the settler colonial entity. The dust will never settle in this conflict. You're wrong. You're wrong on that too. No, the dust will settle on this for sure. Because I don't believe that history magically has a slant uh, towards progress, but I do look at history and recognize that the normal condition for humans is to collaborate with one another rather than being in a constant state of war as evidenced by the European collaboration that we now take for granted. Despite the fact that not that long ago, they were warring with one another, right? It's not optimism. I'm just simply looking at the way history has worked, okay? People who have killed one another for centuries now collaborate with one another, and it's not even a question. And we take that collaboration for granted. We assume that that is the normal condition. The other thing that I also know is that this level of violence is inherently unsustainable, okay? This level of violence that Israel is dishing out to every single one of its neighbors and to territories that it currently illegally occupies is completely and utterly 
unsustainable. That's just, that's it. Fascism is inherently a suicidal ideology. It is constantly seeking out an outgroup at the behest of protecting an in-group. History is riddled with examples of ultranationalist ideologies self-destructing, including, but not limited to, Nazi Germany. Its rise and its fall. Israel is now, due to these last 12 months of endless unlimited genocide, a complete pariah state, not only by the third world, the global south, the developing nations, which always saw it as a colonial apparatus, but also now the first world. Western nations and their populations, especially younger populations in the West, recognize the reality they can see right from wrong. This creates a shit ton of pressure. Israel cannot maintain itself as a Western adjacent nation, as a tourism destination, as a destination for uh, academics to go and visit as long as it keeps up this level of unlimited violence. There is a material harm that a cost that Israel is incurring right now. Okay. A debt to all the bloodshed, both on the social front, the social capital that it's expending, but also on the economic front. Think about your own personal attitude. Think about your own personal journey since October 7, 2023, and how much your opinion has shifted on this matter, okay? Maybe not every single person is going to be as clear-eyed on this issue and recognize, uh, you know, Israel is an apartheid state, but many people have the capacity to still see right from wrong. There's only so much Islamophobic sentiment that can justify the, the burned, charred bodies of children that you see on a daily basis. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, over the years, more critical of, of, of just sort of like of Zionism uh, per se. But yeah. the point is, I think we're at a point where it is so horrific that to maintain the denial, one needs to sort of like shift the entire conversation. Uh, I do not believe that Hassan is anti-Semitic. Um, I, that has and, never and that's the come weird up. thing too. Like, I, like, like I, where I, does this? I, I watch a lot of his streams, and I just, I, I, if you're making those types of arguments, it has to be in bad faith because, or you're at least like, you know, cl like clip chimping, as he would. Say, I don't know if I just never have witnessed. I mean, look, even remotely like that. I, I don't. I, I haven't followed this close enough, but I don't know <laughs> if it's in bad faith as much as it is, at least in the instance of, of Ethan, that it is very very difficult for um some people who are attached to an idea or uh certain realities or have family there or whatnot to uh reconcile what they're seeing yeah i mean i know people who um who literally don't believe that anybody has died in gaza they all they think it's all fake i mean the it's infuriating because I've experienced way more hostility and anti-Semitism from fellow Jews than Assam Morgan or anyone who's been attacked this week. Yeah, I mean, I is we're not anti-Semitic. <laughs> like humans are intrinsically social beings. Civilization begins when we take care of the vulnerable and it crumbles when we are violent. Fascism is anti-evolutionary and progress and freedom is in our human spirit. I agree with that for sure. The the amount of denial, like it, we're we're in that state that era, that that phase of the epoch where like it is so hard to deny, even if you can justify. I've said it a billion times, Hassan. I'd be at any point I fell to this Chaz room status as one of the safest and best regulated places against anti-Semitism on the internet was in question. I would make it known or leave. I'm still here. That, I mean, I see it. I view the, the anti-Semitism allegations, smears, not even allegations, the smears in the same vein as I view people saying that I'm transphobic. <laughs> And sure, there are plenty of people who still maintain this belief that I am transphobic, right? Some trans people online probably think that I am transphobic, right? This is one of the largest trans communities online, you know? It, it does not matter. It does not matter what people say. This does not change my, this does not change my analysis. This does not change my advocacy. I can't counter a false framing that you have hallucinated. It's a coordinated and targeted smear campaign that is being laundered via this drama. It's completely...
selfish and bigoted all of it is in bad faith and it's coming from a very specific corner of the internet yeah i think the dominant american version of jewish authenticity is deeply cornered into the zionist paradigm one where you have to hold your tie to exist in exile but now in relation to an actually existing israel I don't know how to resolve the contradictions between this national existence and humanist Jewish values or what new Jewish authenticity would look like. I don't know if you can do that while retaining any national framework and what that means for Israeli Jews. I don't. What's the second part of that time without an owo? I know you're not anti-Semitic, but with the right clips, I can understand why some things make some people uncomfortable. I think that's the problem with streaming eight hours a day for 50 years. Not everyone will understand you to the same degree. Yeah, but the benefit of that, of my streaming eight hours a day for 10 years not 50, is that you can also find the actual context in which I'm saying certain things. No second part, I just don't know, is for American Jews to hold those discussions. Like, you will never be able to convince me that uh, uh, American Jews cannot arrive at this point if there are Jews in Israel who recognize it and are anti-Zionist, like time without an OO. You know what I mean? It's just crazy. I know what it's like to grow up in ultranationalist culture, an ultranationalist uh, country. You know what I mean? I know. I know what it's like. <laughs> it takes a lot of... It takes a lot of resistance, resilience, uh, intellectual curiosity to overcome things that people take for granted. One of the best things about America, I guess, one of the kind of weaknesses about American nationalism is that they're so hyper-focused on their treats that it's like much easier to uh, examine this kind of thing, especially when paired up with the, with the lack of interest in creating or cultivating this like national mythos in the United States of America, because like we care more about capitalism and upholding that than we do about like having some ultra nationalist movement. If you're not willing to look up the context of the criticism about you, do you realistically expect your detractors to do that for you? Yeah, no, I know the context of the criticism because I know where it's coming from. I've heard it a million times over and I've addressed it a million times over. And I think it's bad faith in general. So it's kind of silly to, to hyper focus on it. What I also find really funny is that like, it's literally packaged clip chimps. And then, and then people turn around and go, why won't Hassan address these bad faith smears that are directly antithetical to his values and his track record on this issue, right? Why won't they address that? And then when I even remotely address it, People turn around and clip something else out of context to only extend the conversation. It doesn't feel like a productive thing to do. There are videos out there with millions of views. Say for the sake of argument. There are, yeah, a chatter put some effort and corrected this. Just a quick reference point to what Hassan actually believes versus the lies. One, Hassan enables anti-Semitism to be commonplace on Twitch. No, anti-Semitism has no place in the leftist movement and has never had space in the leftist movement. Uh, Oh, wow. This is like a massive effort pose. Holy sh**. Yeah, it's the, why don't you respond to the criticism innuendo studios video As that a reasonable moderate ask, why don't you respond to criticism? There's a lot going on in that question more than is immediately obvious. And it's worth understanding. Anyway, there are, there are smear videos of me on every single issue that I have extensively logged countless hours on. Transphobia, white supremacy. Though I guess the one thing that they haven't smeared me on is like that I am not sufficiently like pro uh, Middle Eastern population. That's the one thing. But we'll get, ah, there was that too. People were saying that I was not sufficiently pro Palestine because I uh, drink Coke on stream, you know? So I guess even that exists out there in the ether. Every single thing that is readily available for all to consume on my YouTube page, on the many VODs, thousands and thousands of hours logged on every single issue. It is out there for you to see. You can find it on your own. If you have any real questions or concerns, you can figure it out. If you're like, hmm... Is Hassan personally uh, deeply invested in the success of a Shia militia group? Like, does he really like Hezbollah? Or am I getting manipulated into a false framing on the matter because he dares to explain the context in which Hezbollah exists or is seen by the broader population? That's it. A question you must ask yourself. At the end of the day, the existence precedes essence. I think we can have those unresolved conversations about identity and admit we don't have the full answers also while maintaining full determination in our pursuit for human justice. 
I struggle with my Jewish identity all the time. And at the same time, it's true for every one of my Israeli and Jewish anti-Zionist friends, but that's never stopped us from believing in a free Palestine. Yeah. I think it's very different though, as an American Jew to recognize Israel being bad, even though Israeli anti-Zionists are literally on the ground, we are being pounded with propaganda about Israel, but we can't actually see it. Just like how you wouldn't see the ads if you're subscribed. <laughs> I have to rely on you and other on the ground journalists to see what's actually going on while Israelis can just look at it right in front of them. Well, this is something I'll be looking forward to when I'm not running ads any longer, okay? If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. Opponent on the majority report made a great point that when these people analyze the terrorist groups are fighting, it's viewed as apologia, but when Western violence is put into the context and justified, it's normal. Yeah. Like, this is what I mean. The Ordinary Gamer made a video about you today. Like, dude, come on. Come on. I love how people that want to defend Israel will always be like, it's complicated. Let's not talk about it. Let's not say anything. And then, like, guys who invest all of their time and effort into DEI initiatives and video games or whatever are now making hit pieces. And now I have to take that shit seriously? Like, get the out of here. Why am I supposed to talk to someone who doesn't know what the they're talking about? How am I going to sit here? Like, oh, I'm just going to sit here and listen to every drama farming centrist youtuber with a alt-right adjacent crowd that they are desperately trying to capture the attention of every single time someone makes a youtube video like it's stupid like let's be serious man come on just a quick reference point to what hassan actually believes versus the lies one hassan enables anti-semitism to be commonplace on twitch no come on anti-semitism has no place in the leftist movement it has never had a space in the leftist movement the leftist movement is first and foremost, comprised of revolutionary Jews to begin with, okay? It was literally attacked as a Jewish plot, as a Jewish conspiracy. That's what the Nazis said. That's why the first people they threw in the concentration camps were socialists. It is a very dangerous prospect to make this conflation, which serves the interests of anti-Semites. It all sometimes feels like, especially for christian zionists okay that they have no fear in uh in nazis whatsoever i know that jewish ultra zionists still understandably fear nazis neo-nazis and fascists but i am afraid of this wave of propaganda turning people's uh opinions and dropping them from uh, uh being understandably fearful of the statistical probability that if they do engage if they do withstand some kind of anti-semitic action it will be in the hands of a neo-nazi rather than a muslim person okay but the other side of this also is very frustrating a chatter said what about anti-islam what about Islamophobia and actions such as Islamophobic actions. We do not have a good enough mechanism, unfortunately, in the United States of America, which has in the past three decades made Muslims globally their major enemies in an effort to justify their uh, blood and soil propaganda and imperialist actions in the Middle East. So there is no mechanism to truly figure out exactly what level of anti-Islamophobia or what level of Islamophobia exists in society right now. There was a Damn, that's crazy. That's, I guess I precogged all this. Sh that's why it's so funny when people say, Hassan, why don't you respond to this? Why don't you respond to that? The f am I supposed to do? I responded to it months before it became an issue for you, I guess. That's why I always laugh when people say, Hassan, your opinions have changed. No, they haven't. Hassan denies this happened on October 7th. Hassan laughed at Kamala bringing up October 7th. No, he doesn't. Explain something. Sexual assaults are a routine part of atrocities during war. It can happen, and it has happened time and time again, which is so uh, time and time again, which is why there's a likely likelihood that it could have happened on October 7. New York Times, the narrative of systematic that were conducted by Hamas on October 7. The New York Times has absolutely made up their minds ahead of time before the story ever published and refuses to do their journalistic due diligence. They do engage in State Department propaganda notoriously and historically. This is why there is a likelihood that it could have happened on October 7. This is a position that I've maintained since October 7. There were plenty of atrocities that occurred on October 7, okay, that are akin to acts of terror. Because on October 7, it wasn't just the Palestinian brigades, a coalition of resistance forces that includes Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, PF 
AFLP, DFLP, and many others. It was also, once the barrier into Israel was broken, there was also criminal elements that broke through said barrier. But as far as we saw, given how much of what happened on October 7 was filmed, including the actual real atrocities of Palestinian forces executing civilians, shooting at porta potties and the like uh, during the, the Nova Festival and, and many other circumstances, the likelihood that there wasn't firsthand accounts on rampant sexual assault in the way that the original coverage entailed that didn't meet the muster, like the normal standard of the New York Times reporting, there are some reasons for it because this was, for all intents and purposes, as far as the Palestinian resistance goes, a operation that was, in their own words, much more successful than they had predicted. They thought that there would be a lot more resistance overall and that once the dam broke, there was a ton more violence than a quick in and out operation where they would be able to capture some prisoners of war as hostages in an effort to bargain in an effort. To yeah. So there's that. Hassan is doing bigotry of low expectations. Hassan expects nothing from this kid. Yemeni genocide survivor. No decency, no quality. Consistent on reactionaries. Okay. Because no one is born a reactionary. No um, no one is born a conservative, but let's say someone is conservative here. They automatically teleport and adjust to the material conditions of conservatism in Iran. They would be no different than the mullah. No one is born a conservative. Um, if the, but let's say someone was uh, someone that is conservative here. If they automatically teleported and adjusted to the material conditions of like conservatism in Iran, they would be no different than the mullahs. That's my opinion. Like, and not only that, but in terms of the Yemeni kid, like I went into that interview and I've repeated myself quite a bit, right? I went into that interview assuming that there is a likelihood that he might be Houthi, okay? A Houthi rebel, a Houthi pirate, right? Aside from the memes and whatnot, that was my overarching assumption. There is a likelihood that this person, because at the time we had seen him like going towards the ship and whatnot on a dinghy, I did not know that it was a tourist destination in Yemen, basically, that you can go to and uh, take photos of or whatever. Having said that, however, in the interview, I wanted to first and foremost humanize him, okay, and make him feel comfortable despite the communications barrier that we had, the language barrier that we had. And beyond that, beyond that, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into the background of a person who has experienced only genocide, who has grown up under genocide okay that is real you might not know about this you might not know about the famine in yemen you might not know about like american backed uh actions of saudi arabia in yemen uae in yemen but it's, it still doesn't matter like that is a real thing that occurred okay having said that in that conversation and in many conversations since then uh where this person has given interviews to sky news for example he has reiterated the position that he is not a houthi that he is simply Yemeni. Like he is simply a, a person from Yemen, a kid from Yemen, a social media influencer. Okay. If he was, if he was a Houthi rebel, for the record, if he was a Houthi rebel, I still see value in interviewing that person. Okay. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and be like, nah, there's this 19 year old who has a gun in Yemen, the second highest gun ownership per capita country on the planet after the United States of America is automatically a Houthi terrorist who is deeply invested in the actions of the Ansar Allah movement because people are screaming about it. And I know that the major anger and resentment coming from a lot of people is like, oh, you asked him about whether he watches anime or not. Of course. Yes. Like I said, my job first and foremost was to understand this person's development. Okay, how he got to this position that he is in. Houthi social media sensation compared to Hollywood stars calls on UK and US to stop this war. In this conversation, the 19-year-old Yemeni has been dubbed Tim Houthi Chalamet and the hot Houthi pirate on the internet for his videos on the Red Sea. Attacks by Yemen, Yemen's uh, Houthi fighters, officially known as supporters of God or Ansar Allah in Arabic, have been made against Israel and on commercial ships. The Iranian-backed group has defied repeated warnings to stop targeting ships. U.S. and British forces have launched strikes in the area. But Rashid told Sky News he has been posting videos about his experience to show solidarity with Palestine. Through translation, he added, my message is that they stop this war and reassess the situation in Palestine. There are children starving, uh, thirsty, dying under bombardment in Gaza, like a two-year-old uh, dying from bombardment. 
Why? Because of the actions of the Zionists. Yemen stood with Palestine and was being bombarded for the solidarity, but this hasn't affected us and we continue to stand by Palestine. He considers himself a media personality, but his main mission is to spread awareness about Palestine. Rashid had been, uh, Rashid had to keep setting up new accounts as the previous ones on Facebook would get shut down. All of the Yemeni people are with Ansar Allah and with Palestine. Even if it, even if I appear with arms, all Yemenis, uh, all Yemeni carry arms. It's normal. He added. The reason why he answered this question is because they probably asked them, even though it's not mentioned in this article, whether he was a Houthi himself or if he was Ansar Allah, where he says all the Yemeni people are with Ansar Allah, as in he is not a part of Ansar Allah, as he said to me in the interview. Okay, just so people understand, just so there is no. Uh, just so people have, have uh, an understanding of this. This part is also interesting to hear. Sam talks about the terrorist uh, apologist accusation here. I, I said that he had been doing, I think it was like, he has been doing worse than apology for Houthis and Hezbollah or something. Okay. Um, and and it, was, it was taken as like, a, uh, you can't criticize, um, uh, you know, resistance groups yeah i mean i think and i could go into the examples of what made me recoil but I this is a different chatter um context caller had sent a message a week before this this is bullprog i assume that's like another content creator I, that's not what i want to do yeah no i get it i mean i i think like look um it, it, it's it's a nuanced question because um undoubtedly you know undoubtedly sam doesn't need to know anything about the details of of like whatever is like clip champed or whatever he might even take what this person is saying at face value but you know what's interesting about this it ultimately doesn't matter because he knows that when you contextualize any kind of violent resistance movement that is outside of american sphere of influence you will get terror jacketed okay he knows this because he has been doing this for many, many years. And he has been attacked viciously as well. Most of the time, however, these attacks used to come from the right. Liberals were, at the very least, a little bit more understanding and did not engage in this level of immediate, like, oh, you're a terrorist supporter, you're a terrorist defender. The, the, there is an attempt to make, um, to make, to define these groups, whether it's, you know, uh, uh, the Houthis or uh, Hezbollah or Hamas um, or, or the Israelis, for that matter, in the most absolutist terms. Um, and certainly, you know, you can have uh, terror tactics and be a liberation movement and uh, people can make, uh, you know, assessments you know, as to tactics and to efficacy, um, you know, because people always, you know, uh, make these assessments. Um, you know, the Houthis, uh, I don't think are, you know, the, I, 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 I don't think they're role models, as it were. You know, the, <laughs> uh, there was value yeah, to some degree. That's what I was getting at. What's that? And that that's kind of what I was getting at. Okay, but there, then there is no argument, okay? Because I have time and time again talked about this aspect of this, uh, of their civil governance or their domestic affairs or their ideological positioning as being directly at odds with mine. Same with, the, same with Hezbollah. It is utterly irrelevant in the conversation surrounding their actions against Israel's endless bombing campaign. And this is what I always say. This is what I always say. Always. If you look to Hezbollah's like uh, ideological position on gay people, okay? Or the Houthis' ideological position on gay people or their actions that they've taken against gay people in Yemen. And you turn around and you turn around and go, damn dog, can't believe you're defending that. You're a idiot i have never defended that and i will never defend that the point is it is utterly irrelevant in the grand scheme of things it is utterly irrelevant because the reason why they're being bombed is not because of their 
uh, you know, death campaign or destruction campaign upon gay people or whatever, okay? If you personally believe that Operation Prosperity Guardian is being done to defend homophobia or, or to fight against homophobia, you are the biggest rube of all time. Hassan Nasrallah was not assassinated by the state of Israel for Hezbollah's actions in Syria. Hassan Nasrallah was not assassinated by the state of Israel for being homophobic. Hassan Nasrallah was assassinated by the state of Israel alongside PFLP and DFLP leaders who had nothing to do with the cross-border uh, bombing uh, campaign that was going between Hezbollah and, and uh, Israel, by the way. But they still were assassinated in that same night because of his position as a figurehead that resists against Israeli bombing campaigns in Gaza. That's it. Not actually irrelevant. It's just that it should be treated as a different issue. No, it is irrelevant in this conversation. It is irrelevant in this conversation, especially in the same vein that like, if you were, if you were to turn around and be like, well, sorry, I don't know what like uh, America's opinion on gay people was in the forties. So I will not talk about like, their actions against the Nazi regime. That's ridiculous. People would laugh at you if you were like, well, excuse me, America was a segregationist hole in the 40s. So, so what? Were they the bad guys in World War II? No, they weren't. The only reason why people bring it up in conversations like this is the exact same reason over and over again. They did this with the Taliban. Like, I'm not a Band of the Taliban. What are you stupid? It's to justify permanent occupation. It is a way to. It is a way to try and be like, well, they're bad guys too. It's like, yeah, sure. Are you fixing it, or are we the big bad? Yeah, it's like saying British sterilized gay people, so they actually were the bad guys in World War II. America was a racist apartheid regime during the 30s and 40s. Stalin was a racist conservative opportunist who was responsible for Holodomor. The British Empire was doing genocide and doing colonialism for many decades leading up to World War II and during World War II. The Nazis were such an insane evil that the Allies were are very clearly and correctly viewed as the good guys. Context matters. Exactly. Exactly. And yes, no, Stalin did have conservative leanings. Let's be real. Okay, calm down. Like... He did. He did. He, he had a lot of right opinions, especially within the framework of World War II. And he also wasn't the best, uh, wasn't, wasn't the best governor. Okay. It, I don't think that that is a, uh, <laughs> I don't think that that is a controversial take. See, the reason why we can have this conversation, however, is because now we are having this conversation within the historical framework. Let's continue. Yeah, yeah I mean, look, like I there was value. There's a lot of stuff going on. And some of their tactics I found uh, were valuable, right? Like somebody is at least trying to inhibit and, and make Israel pay a price uh, that's associated with yeah, the, their it seemed like attacks. The only people fighting, fighting for them, yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I totally but at the that. same time, and like I, at the same time, you're exacerbating um, at one point the um, the starvation in Sudan. Some of those ships are sending, uh, you know, goods and uh, are sending uh, food supplies and aid to Sudan. I mean, so it's not none of it is is black and white. And and I think, yeah. but um, but certainly, like the idea that you know, there's total denial that a Hamas was a or is a liberation movement. People can, um, uh, I, I think, you know, disagree I think with their, people can disagree with their methods. Okay, they can, and there has been many thoughtful criticisms of their methods, and 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 even historical reference points as to how they evolved into uh, the the violent actions that they thought were appropriate in terms of causing the colonial settler colonial state to incur a penalty for its maintenance of the apartheid. Okay. I don't even agree with what uh, Sam said in terms of like uh, Ansar Allah is responsible for, uh, you know, some harm in, in Sudan, but especially considering that one of the countries that also was responsible for the famine in and, and genocide in Yemen is currently also responsible for the RSF uh, doing a genocide in Sudan. Please just say anything about Sudan. I have talked about it before. What do you mean? Then talk about Sudan for once. I have. It's the UAE. Immoral to kill uh, civilians. Um, 
people can, you know, uh, like I've already said, from an international uh, law standpoint, I think uh, Hamas probably has, um, you know, uh, more standing uh, than uh, most people give them credit for. Uh, I do know that the um, ICJ had or is seeking warrants for crimes against humanity, both for, for Sinwar and uh, I think his uh, number two and um, uh, Netanyahu and Gallant. Um, and I defer to, you know, those prosecutions as to the, the validity of those. Um, uh, a person asked, like, where is this uh, assessment coming from? I mean, you can Google it yourself. But to end Sudan's war, here's from foreignpolicy.com. It's one of those few issues where you can go to foreignpolicy.com and actually see exactly what the fuck is going on because it's one of those few issues where like it's our ally doing it, but like we don't really have a direct involvement, so we can actually criticize it. Um, why can't you block work anymore? What is happening here? I hate that. How do I? Oh, here it is. Never mind. I did it. I did the dang thing. Sudan civil war. Fueled by secret arms shipments from UAE and Iran. Despite denials, weapons inspection. I like that they put Iran in there. Okay, Chrome is breaking it. No, it's fine. Uh, it, it worked. Um, the ongoing crisis there has been re uh, has reached a catastrophic proportion. Yet the international community's response remains woefully inadequate. A series of missteps and political maneuvers have undermined efforts to provide meaningful assistance to those in desperate need. And the Rapid Support Forces, the RSF, the paramilitary group responsible for much of the violence, has yet to be held accountable for actively destroying the country's food reserves. The situation demands immediate action and a drastic shift in approach from global leaders and institutions. At the core of this failure is the United Nations Security Council's persistent delays in addressing findings from its own panel of experts on Sudan. These findings document credible allegations of the United Arab uh, Emirates' involvement in violating Darfur's arms embargo by supplying the RSF with weapons and ammunition. Furthermore, The Guardian reported that the UK government officials have been blocking discussions of the UAE's involvement in the Security Council for months, including after the Labour Party took power in July. So if you want to understand, it is like somewhat associated with the Western leadership refusing to... Uh, refusing to reckon western leadership refusing to rein uae in but once again we rarely ever uh get our allies in the region to rein it in seemingly especially when you know you're gonna laugh about and i today uh chatter i think you should probably watch this uh you should probably look at this if you are legitimately uh, concerned with this um you know this will probably cause you to understand that you are maybe deluded or wrong i like that there is this massive effort post by the way respect uh respect to the person who made that i don't think that you care about the truth though you want to hear about how another person from a different community defends genocide calling into the majority report no how on? let's just finish um, this and so you know i i don't want to be rooting on a um uh you know someone who uh, those prosecutors neither of whom have been uh, convicted, but you know, that's not, that's not usually what I uh, recommend, uh, is a recommendation to me. But, um, I also think that the preponderance of, on some level, it's just a sheer propaganda war, right? I mean, there's yeah. no, uh, you know, like I say, th that I have Boxing friends AI of my father's yeah. calling to ask <laughs> if I'm an anti-Semite makes me feel like this is, hey, wait, maybe we're not, maybe this isn't just like a, a straight on assessment of what's going on here. And, um, mm -hmm. and so uh, I can certainly see from a rhetorical standpoint and from a propaganda standpoint, like you don't want to show up at a, uh, a, a, a you know, uh, a gunfight with a knife, as it were. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah. I wouldn't worry. About I just it. say, Bull Prague, I appreciate yeah. you calling I, it. And, and I want to say like, I, I do like, I, I feel defensive about what Hassan's going through and I, I know so does Emma. Um, yeah. and we have a disagreement there, but just generally, I do think there's a tension here. And one thing, um, that was a quote from Fred Hampton weeks before he died after a, a weatherman riot in Chicago said, we believe that the weatherman action is anarchistic, opportunistic, individual, individualistic, it's chauvinistic, it's custeristic. And, and that's the bad part about it. It's custeristic in that. It, 
it's leaders take people into situations where they can be massacred and they call that a revolution. It's nothing but child's play. It's folly. Mm-hmm. We think these people may be sincere, but they're misguided. They're muddleheads and they're scatterbrains. So like generally, I, and uh, you know, I, I do appreciate all the work you've done out there actually in the streets um, and seeing this stuff. So yeah, you know, no hard feelings on our part. Yeah. Well, my, so my like closing message that I kind of wanted to get across is that like, I care about you guys. I care about the rest of the crew. I care about all the listeners. And, like, I just don't want people to burn themselves on some silly stuff. And, like, there are ways to stay on message without... Yeah, you're right, man. Um, I should... Uh, yeah, it. That's a, that's a good criticism. Call missing some context? No, it's just, like, it's such a silly thing dude it's such a it's it's such a silly type of criticism coming from someone who's like ostensibly on the leftist side of this issue because it's like like what are you what are you talking about you got primed into believing that like i want some kind of like islamist fundamentalism to occur because of my contextualization of how resistance groups operate like come on like tone policing uh, a, a tone policing uh, a, a, a genocide is, is ridiculous. Yeah, he says we should stay on message and then complains about something that happened a year ago. I know. It's like, it's almost as uh, ridiculous as like, oh, I don't want an adpocalypse to happen, but also I hope it does. Is ridiculous. You want it to happen. You're like demanding that it happens, as a matter of fact. He compared you to some teens at a protest who graffiti kill cops. That's the context. Yeah, except I have also, ironically, criticize people who go to pro-Palestinian protests and then do that where they're like, we're going to kill all Zionists. Like, you live in America, man. You live in the United States of America. Like, what are you talking about? You can't be saying shit like that. So, you know, I understand how passionate people get in these moments and how frustrated people get in these moments, but that kind of LARPing is also ineffective. So on the optics front, I have also regularly talked about that being, especially in the West, not a f- appropriate method of protest. So that's another part of this equation, okay? I always say over and over again, you can never be as callous as right-wingers are, and you shouldn't anyway. Regardless, if you were to turn around and compare that to like some random 19-year-old in Yemen posting a similar image, you are insane, okay? You have to recognize what the f- these people's live, like their lived experiences look like. Okay. Yes, I will always have smoke for someone who grew up in the Upper West Side saying some shit like that versus like it is immaterial in the grand scheme of things when someone living in Yemen is posted like that. Okay. It's immaterial. Like it's, it's still wrong, but it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. You could die at any moment. Okay. It's ridiculous. People have compared this dude that I interviewed 10 months ago at this point, like even before. Uh, I believe the, the Houthis were brought back into the terrorist watch list, by the way, even though Brandon took them off the watch list, but then put them back on to launch Operation Prosperity Guardian, like to Osama bin Laden, you know, the architects of 9-11. And it's like, dude, come on. Let's just be honest here. Someone in their community are here crashing out and punching at any pro Palestinian streamers. Yeah, I don't disagree with Bullprog, larger point, but the way he connected it back to you was just insane bullshit. I, I believe they're... Gender pronouns are they, them, as someone corrected me in the chat. Man, why do I get 15-year-old D fans in my DMs now trying to explain to me about some clip I haven't seen and how you were secretly using Sabra Hummus as an anti-Israeli racial slur? God was trying to explain to me, an Israeli, what the term Zabar means and how it secretly has some racial meaning. It doesn't. Genuinely felt like talking to a paranoid schizophrenic. Any idea what they're referring to? I don't know what Zabar means. What is Zabar? I, I don't even know what that means. I don't think I've ever used that. That is pretty funny, though. Like, telling a, a Jewish-Israeli anti-Zionist whose family is also from Yemen, by the way. Like, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm a Christian guy. I'm a white Christian dude in Iowa. And let me tell you, okay, you, my friend. <laughs> oh, it means, uh, oh, is it Zabar, like a different way of saying Sabra? I didn't even know that. Lamau is literally just Sabra in Hebrew. Oh, okay. <laughs> Like, <laughs> let me tell you, sir, a, a Jewish Israeli anti Zionist, let me tell you what's what, okay? You are actually under fire in this community. You are, you are not recognizing, <laughs> you are not recognizing the danger that is presented to you, my friend. Zabar is a Hebrew term for Sabra and is historically been used by Zionists to describe this new Jewish archetype of the Zionist era. It's very sociologically charged, but it's not a racial slur. 
he told me, you're so close. And he said, watch five minutes of a Destiny stream. <laughs> Dude, they are so passionate. I just wish that they would use this passion. That's the handle? It's this guy? <laughs> oh, no way. Ain't no way. I know who that is. I know who that is. Ain't no way. Doesn't... This is a juicer. They used to be such a kind chatter and their brain broke from the f juicer fallout. Damn, that's sad, dude. I can't believe they've become that much of a, f uh, a boner Chelly fan. Damn, I'm so goddamn parasocial with my own f chatters. It's crazy. Yeah, someone fell in the rookie hole, dude. They said that at TwitchCon, you were secretly making, making a racial tier list with Israelis at the bottom. Again, I didn't watch TwitchCon, so I was clueless, but who knows? Maybe you're speaking in code, Asan. He was, however, very kind and just said, I'm trying to help you. Strange experience. Wait, he thinks I was doing a tier list at TwitchCon? I wasn't even a part of that uh, A-Rab's podcast uh, tier list. What the level of hallucination at this point is is hilarious. Yes, and Sabra was code for Israelis. Yeah, no, it was... I genuinely felt bad. I also have a dude. I avoided you for so long because of how crazy your haters made you sound. Even though I knew I probably agree with you about most everything politically, you got deranged haters, man. I know, but ultimately you have to remember something. Okay. You have to remember something important. You're here. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. I think in a long enough timeline, given that history does have a tendency to vindicate me on a lot of these issues that I speak of, Many people, for one reason or another, will inevitably get to a point where they go, who is speaking out against this inequality that I am experiencing? And considering my track record and my political opinions on uh, every single issue and the long history that I have uh, dedicated to speaking out on virtually uh, every kind of, of bigotry, every kind of issue, you will inevitably arrive at something you care about and then you're going to see my coverage on that and go, oh my God, I was wrong. I was so goddamn wrong. Just like that one chatter is, right? So what matters is, what matters is you might have these opinions at first. You might be primed into hating me. You might be primed into hating me, but there is going to be a moment where you see the truth, either through genuine intellectual curiosity or because you want to maybe come in here to hate watch. Okay. And then you're going to be like, okay, maybe these guys are just lying about this person. And then once you start recognizing that those people that are lying are so malicious and, and so sane, you will, you know, you will probably uh, look at other things that I talk about in a very different way. Once that bond of trust is broken, once that like, once the way that I was presented to you does not meet the reality when you see it with your own two eyes... You will, you know, you will inevitably be more charitable. Taking stances out of reflexive reaction or spite and because uh, like fascists will exploit your emotions and use your reactions against you. And yeah. we have to be careful about giving in to cynicism because that's when we start letting go of hope and turning towards darker paths. And, you know, a community might start saying something ironically and soon enough people are just saying it. And the memes become what they actually mean, like what happened with 4chan and Pepe and all that stuff. So we have an adage that we use at George Floyd Square about a snow globe where something will come and shake you up and it will be hard to see for a minute. Yeah, the, the, the youth demand Shia Islam. <laughs> the youth are going to the youth are going to demand Shia Islam. They are going to see the light of Allah. The American Christian dominance has gone on for far too long. Everyone knows, everyone knows that the United States of America must be led <laughs> into the new era by, uh, by changing, by, by seeing the light of Allah, recognizing Muhammad uh, as, his, as his prophet and, and, Changing our secular governance structure away from uh, Christian values to one that reflects the true light of Allah, Shia Islam. It's literally going to be like those two communists with a book club and disco Elysium. Very worrying. Bro, you need to say this as a joke. They will believe you. I am saying this as a joke. That's 
nuts. This is what the English right actually thinks is happening? Yeah. But if you take a moment to settle, the vision of the <laughs> core goal becomes clear again. So, yeah. Well, just, Prague, appreciate it. Out to everyone. Thank you. Really appreciate uh, your... The only reason why the 4chan memes become real, uh, real life is because it's homegrown extremism. It's homegrown fundamentalism. This is no different than assuming that, like, America is going to adopt Sharia law, okay? You have to be insane. Worry about, as, as do I, our own domestic extremism instead of assuming that magically Americans are going to turn to uh, Hezbollah as a form of civil governance here in the United States of America. You're insane having said that there are some other uh there are some other points no hassan supports russia no he doesn't uh he also raised 200k for ukraine hitler which by the way vladimir putin is bad look at the sign actually sorry uh i forgot we elevated that to vladimir putin is very bad from bad to very bad look at the sign hassan and his community are uh fundraising for care or ukraine crisis fund two hundred thousand dollars so far uh here's the russian military ad according to russia they don't know who the you are but they don't seem to like me a lot um meanwhile turns out according to russia they don't know who you are but it seems like they don't like me a lot <laughs> uncanny okay do you put my face on a sh cup <laughs> yeah i got i got dunked on by the russian government that was cool um hassan defends chinese colonialism openly he's pro genocide in tibet not even debatable he said it himself he said their culture is inferior and that china did them a favor by taking them over that's genocide no he doesn't Tibet was a feudal oppressive slavery backed autonomous state. Guardian, 98% of the population was enslaved. Way to describe Taiwan as well. The American federal Similar government term. going into the south and killing, unfortunately not all of them, but a decent amount of slavers <laughs> and defenders of slavery. This is violent retribution from a powerful oh. federal government. That, that comparison uh, is, is very frustrating for a lot of people because they were like, how dare you say that? Yeah, it's not even an apt comparison because the Mao's groups would not have any kind of, uh, uh, would have no motion whatsoever if it wasn't for Tibetans themselves that up, like that had a, a anti-feudal uprising. Anyway, what is this? This is from The Guardian. Until 1959 when China cracked down on Tibetan rebels in the... Yeah, yeah, it's just like, it's, I don't think that like Tibetan culture is... A barbaric or anything like that okay it's the tibetans themselves that you know rose up against feudal slavery the only place we deviate is that i don't think we should displace eight million jews that were born there hassan agrees why i don't believe in a two-state solution any longer so um there are yeah not only do i agree with that uh no displacement of jews that live there i have had this conversation directly with ethan so i don't know what he's talking about in terms of like uh, in terms of his belief that I think like eight, uh, I believe that we should displace all of the people that live there. We had this conversation directly. Here it is. There already is a one state. Like the way I see it, the, the actual legitimate reason as to why I don't believe in a two state solution any longer is because there is a one state, right? And that one state is an apartheid state. It's a constant Israeli occupation in the West Bank and constant control over Gaza as well, which has been a demonstrable failure for Israeli security, obviously. Uh, you and I agree on that. But my solution basically, when I say I want a one state, is is it, first and foremost a moral one because I do want the end to the apartheid so that uh, Palestinians can have uh, you know recognition, it can continue a life of dignity, have autonomy, and participate in a secular democratic process. But the alternative is, the way I see it is like, is it a one state that is an apartheid or is it a one state that doesn't uh, have an apartheid? And You're so saying it there, could still be the state of Israel. I don't care what it's called. I, I have no interest in, uh, in in discussing that. I care more about like, human beings that that live there i guess you know it's like this i have said time and time again that i think it would be unimaginable cruelty to displace hundreds of thousands of people living in the west bank okay that it is completely it, it's just not going to happen like not only will it never happen but also on top of that it would be cruel okay and that is precisely the reason why I believe that Israel has made it inevitable that there can only be a one state if there is a just solution to all of this. Okay? <sighs> Admission to slander for a year is almost constantly elevating people that want me to f die and uh, 
and and running defense for people to f wait what is this ease admission to slander Dude, and that's why for a year it right. was just constant like elevating people that want me to f die <clears throat> and running defense for people that f hate me yeah that's also completely untrue uh there was another effort post specifically on this uh on my subreddit that there was also uh there was also another post on this on my subreddit specifically about how I had uh, consistently defended Ethan, consistently defended Ethan uh, throughout the entire process for the past year, saying that all things that I have heard from him directly, all things that I have seen from him directly contradict like him being this uh, Israel defender. Having said that, however, of course, I have also tried to communicate to Ethan that like, while I know that you are not a defender of Israel, okay? People are not going to know what's in your heart and what's in your mind, and they only respond to what you are putting out there. So if 12 months of genocide and your output is specifically about like people calling you a Zionist over and over again, including but not limited to many different moments where um, you know people would come in here and be like, he made fun of Aaron Bushnell, uh, who self-immolated. He did this. He did that. He like, uh, you know, kept repeating certain talking points over and over again. And it's like all of that is going to obviously cause people to assume that you are more invested in one side of this conversation. Even in that conversation that we had months ago, that last conversation that we had in person, when he said when he made a comparison about JVP, Jewish Voice for Peace, saying that there were capos as well in the Nazi regime that collaborated with the Nazi regime, that like, I tried to explain to him that like, I don't think you mean this. And yet people will hear that. People will hear that and assume that that's what you mean. Of course, people are going to assume that that's what you are saying. That's what I meant. At the time when I tried to explain, like, there's only so much I can do in terms of like stopping the flow of criticism coming your way when you present yourself a certain way to the broader audience and you don't actually show, you don't actually show the audience like what the full scale of your, of your uh, framework is. The moral of the whole story is what you said. If you repeat what Zionists say, you can't stop people from thinking you're a Zionist. Exactly. Here, this is, yeah. This is the other effort pose. Timestamp breakdown. Hassan defends Ethan on September 13th, 2024. Ethan took a clip from this stream out of context to show on his show, so I figured it would be a good idea to add context by breaking down the stream with timestamps. Impossible to argue that Hassan is doing anything but standing up for Ethan and telling off his chat in the stream, regardless of what Ethan's unhinged, untrue rant calling for his friend to be banned on Twitch will have you think. Ethan turning off comments on the video when fans disagree with him in the comments is insane. I think a lot of people fail to consider that when I choose not to show certain things coming from Ethan's side, it is not because I'm fearful of the brilliant points that he's making. It's more so that it's disappointing, it's sad to see, and beyond that, it's more so to, in some ways, not present him in the worst possible light that he is desperately presenting himself as. Hassan begins reacting to the video of why the Leftovers podcast ended. Hassan talks about why he never talks about Ethan. Why Leftovers ended? Because parasocialism and him not being at odds with Ethan on Israel-Palestine. Hassan says he doesn't care that Ethan calls him out because he knows Ethan's heart is in the right place about Israel-Palestine, regardless of how he treats Hassan's community and mods. Hassan defends Ethan, telling off his chat and saying that Ethan will never become MAGA. Anti-Semitism is an abhorrent and completely unacceptable. I have never allowed it. It is my red line. Hassan says when he looks back at leftovers, he's happy that it happened. Hassan supports enjoying Ethan's content, even when people disagree. Stark tone difference from Ethan saying Hassan should be banned on Twitch because of how Hassan's content makes him feel, don't you think? Hassan says that he got the feeling that Ethan thought Hassan was trying to turn the H3 community against Ethan when Hassan was instead offering him more charitability and banning chatters who came into the stream to shit talk Ethan slash cause drama. Hassan defends Ethan's character, even when Ethan gets too passionate and flies off the rails because ultimately... Hassan thinks Ethan's heart is in the right place. Hassan says Ethan is 90% of the way on the correct stance on Israel-Palestine. Hassan says, please point to anti-Semites in the chat so we can ban them. Says anti-Semitism is banned in his community. Of course, because it always has been. Um, Hassan tells off a chatter for condemning Ethan instead of commending Ethan for having the correct take in 2021. Hassan tells chat to shut up and he hates that they don't care about his well thought out opinion and hates how they call Ethan a Nazi and why he hates covering drama with Ethan. And he knows that people will spin his opinion to prove his community is anti-Semitic. Hassan goes off on chat again, calling them crazy and telling them they can't be normal, saying that it's not Destiny Chatter's cosplaying, but rather people who say he is not sufficiently leftist. 
If I ever catch someone talking maliciously about Gila, I will ban you. You are an unhinged psycho. Permanently bans chatter talking bad about Ethan. Hassan correctly predicts a reasonable take on the issue will not get clipped, but instead an out of context take will be clipped by Boner Chili's community, which Ethan did use, by the way. Not only did he, not only did he go directly to the subreddit, but he also straight up used a clip from a, a clip titled Hamas Abi. How can I view that in any framework but pure, unadulterated, unregulated Islamophobia? An unlisted clip titled Hamas Abi. Like, that's insane, man. That's insane. That's actually insane. That is not good faith at all. There is no way for me to actually look at that and, and, <laughs> and, and, and treat that with, like, kindness and charitability beyond what I've done. I think the most charitable thing that I can do is refuse to talk about it. You know, it's insane that you support CCP. <laughs> okay, dude. I just want high-speed rail in the United States of America. I want even development in rural communities in the United States of America, okay? I want healthcare in the United States of America. I want good college education in the United States of America that is free. I want better educational opportunities for every single American, okay? Hassan identifies someone posting an HU subreddit as a D fan. LSF stalker who's been clipping him for five years. Frogan clip from Ethan's podcast. Hassan correctly predicts that all that will come out of the situation is drama that turns into drama content and says that his audience is annoying and don't listen to him. Hassan correctly predicts that random chatters on necessary chirping messages will be twisted against them. Ethan showed them on stream today. Hassan rage quits on chat explaining how their acting is why leftovers ended, asking his chat to focus on what matters and will advance the cause of a free Palestine. Just felt this VOD slash response from Hassan deserves a voice because Ethan didn't mention that Hassan defends him and tells off his chat about it. This is from September 13th, 2024. If you look back at uh, the early stages of the uh, saga and the drama, you will recognize that I had time and time again done more than this, okay? More than this. Such a well thought out record keeping of Hassan's reasonableness, but have you considered that Hassan is a Muslim and sending waves to signal his audience? Is there any chance at all he sees this and gives you charitability? Oh, I want it. I want it for him. I don't know. Maybe. Like that DanClancySucks.com website is literally reskinned Hamasabi.com, by the way, because even they realize that like that level of Islamophobic fervor is probably not going to present well to a broader audience. So they like basically reskinned it and it's all clips that are completely clipped out of context that go directly against things that I believe in. And this has been ongoing for the past year because that community, Bonercelli's community, is way more predisposed with making a mockery and, and presenting a false narrative surrounding one of the loudest voices that is pro-Palestinian emancipation uh, than, than the actual genocide. They, they don't give a They do not give a why do this? He's just going to misconstrue your points like last night. It's okay because there's 38,000 people in here and not every single person in here is totally primed and totally tuned into this. So it deserves, it deserves some level of recognition for those who are in here who are like, I don't really understand. I thought you were a cool guy, but now I'm thinking that you're a, uh, you know, pro Islamist fundamentalist terrorist, dude. Like what the for a year, Hassan was constantly elevating people that me. Hassan has always defended E. I think you're a good person. Just understand that people don't know the empathy that you have and simply see similar talking points that they've heard from others, others that don't demonstrate that same empathy. I, mean, that's I, all Ethan, I, do. I know. I never you said disagree. that. You disagree. Clearly, that's it. And that's fine. I, I don't, Ethan, I don't, I've never said any of those things against you. And I, and I don't believe that. I'm simply trying to describe the position of Palestinians in this matter on this front. And, You've and done that, and I understand, bro. Anti I understand. I understand. I've listened to you. I and I agree. I, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to fight. I think this is like. I mean, it, it sucks, and I'm. I'm sorry that I. I made you feel a certain way. I'm sorry that my community. He's pretending that he has nothing to do with this ridiculous. He pulled the sub up on stream. I don't know why he's embarrassed about the association with destiny. Like I, I actually don't get it. Like, uh, I, it's not like, like I, we've seen it. I know where these talking points are coming from. Like, it, you know, I know where these clips out of context are coming from. And it's like my position on this has not changed, which is ironic because people at the time, like people at the time did not comprehend this like people at the time were were thinking like oh he's saying he has no control he has no control over his own 
community. Hassan has no control over his community. That's not what I was saying at all. Okay. There's only so much I can do, but I cannot mind control people into assuming that you are assuming that you are a uh, pro Palestinian when you are using similar talking points to those who are, you know, pro Israel. I think people know that that community is unhinged and obsessed. So Ethan knows it discredits his narrative. He's receiving all these clips served on a platter, trickled down long after you've dealt with them, and he probably knows it? No. So yeah, I think, like, this does a pretty good job. I think this does a pretty solid job of, like, uh, you know, maybe uh, showcasing, like, what the... Uh, showcasing what the, what the narrative is. You said this exact quote. I know. It's weird uh, that I repeat myself so much and, and have to do it time and time again. It's because D called ex podcast buddy uh, R word several times. So it was pathetic for him to capitulate that openly. Yeah. Aren't there logs of destiny time and time again saying like Ethan is R worded over and over again. He's like pathetic and all this. Sh and until it basically uh, until uh, basically this was a good vehicle to unload the frustrations that you feel. Because it seems, I remember people at the time being mad at you in bad faith, obviously for being nice to people you know personally. He saw the same critique come up recently too. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. But the point is you've always been courteous and have never done anything that could possibly be construed as leading your followers to harass anyone. Yes, even this clip itself says, please be nice in the comments and do not harass Ethan. Because I don't need our friends be respectful. Not just logs, but clips. He said he had an IQ of 80. Yes, there are tons of clips. It's just strange that like this level of serialized systematized open uh cyber stalking and and uh mass harassment campaigns why is, is so is so it's so normal and there's like not really anything you can do but yeah i have to obviously still address some of this lander you know what is this we've seen such a weird progression of twitter wokeness to where now a plainly reactionary community like destinies can employ tools of shaming and canceling while still using slurs in the very same tweet that they do with it's crazy that hassan will shit all over me and call me a racist for using the n-word in quotes while doing a podcast with this guy lamau not trying to defend h3h2 by any, any means it's just surreal how the previous generations of people calling cracker a slur would have rallied around H3 for using slurs in that clip, but have now found a way to have their cake and eat it. Appear progressive while reactionary. That's from, you know, all the way back in 2021. That's not his account. Yes, it is. The f talking about it was. I don't know what his new account is, but this was at the time his account. <laughs> that's so funny. People are like, that's not his account. Yeah, he's been banned a million times over because, you know, he, I think he, he you know why. I know you know Honestly. what everyone knows, but this was hilarious. Imagine lying to your audience so comfortably. What is this? Pretty severe, the way that he draws everything back to Destiny. I don't know him. I've never talked about him on the channel. Because Destiny's been getting like mega canceled by every conservative for saying he doesn't give a about the guy who died. Which is whatever. You know, here's the one where he actually had a debate with Destiny. And main guys, there's Vosh, Destiny, and Hassan, and they all hate each other. They're all social, or no, Destiny's not a socialist, but they're all like libs, and they all hate each other. And Destiny was digging in on him, rightfully so, in my opinion. I mean, she's Louise. Being like, I'm a terrible person. I'm the worst. And as soon as Destiny gets on, he goes, <laughs> you, go yourself. You're a terrible person. Uh, he says, Destiny and Ethan Klein call me foolish for supporting the Tate's innocence. Then once Destiny calls in, he starts tilting himself bad, and he gets more and more and more deranged. I guess Destiny has a problem with this guy. I think everybody has a problem with this guy, outside of Fresh and Fit. Like, uh, Destiny was saying, um, these are the same out of type, uh, same type of out of context clips that D watches. Like, I know he knows who he is, dog. What do you mean? Uh, like, of course I know who, uh, I know he knows who Destiny is. What are you talking about? He knows that the subreddit was being brigaded at the time too. It, it's not, it's not necessarily that like he knows who he is. It, it's more so what my point is not that he knows who he is and he's lying about it. Everybody knows that. It's not that. My point is he's getting his compilation of clips, I don't think from his own uh, production staff, to do like uh, this clipped out of context like Hassan is extremist, loves Russia, loves China. I think he's getting it directly from Destiny's community, which is odd. Bro, the Destiny subreddit are straight up celebrating providing ammo. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's scouring that subreddit to find oppo on you. It's clear. It's like if I went to H3 snark, uh, it, which I talked about yesterday. I was like, it's it's not normal to follow someone that much. 
especially if you hate them. But like it would literally be if I did a H3 snark subreddit review where I compiled all the things that H3 snark put together. And then I was like, well, these are my valid criticisms against Ethan. And then be like, he's too afraid to address them. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, I saw this here. This is, yeah, I saw this. Ethan Klein scrolling Destiny subreddit for anti on talking points. Once again, how do you arrive at a Hamasabi, unlisted Hamasabi clip? A clip titled Hamasabi that is unlisted. For the clip of you watching Kamala and grimacing when she said Hamas graped women, what's the missing context? I don't know. Do you think that I haven't written extensively or talked extensively on October 7, the atrocities, what actually took place, the media coverage surrounding it, creating additional atrocity propaganda when it wasn't even necessary, but exclusively to f make it seem as though uh, all of, uh, uh, what do you call it, all of I Israel's actions that uh, came after October 7 would be justifiable? Or do you think that a, a what, two-second clip is the sum total of my entire perspective on this matter. I'm a political commentator. I'm a political commentator. I'm a political commentator. Do you think I haven't talked about this extensively? Ban me. You were a pretty good person to get into politics with, and I appreciate that. But after going through yours and other streamers' history, you are the most cowardly individual when it comes to defending your takes against others. dgg -er for life. <laughs> I'm not going to ban you, brother. I don't know if the mods already did. I hope you're, I hope you live a, a happy life. I do mean it. Like I, God damn, dude. How do you get here? 2022. I, it was Dearborn. I live near there. We're going to vote on an upcoming election. We're voting on the Dearborn situation. It seems the book should be allowed for public viewing. For real, why am I here? Why am I even a liberal? Oh yeah, because I got a five figure check coming from TYT. Like that's how much of a fan he was that he was joking about uh, TYT checks. As someone who's watching since the TYT days, always so to me seeing people who known about you uh that long turn against you i know why and i know how it happens people are very passionate in this community okay people are very passionate in this community and if there is an issue and i'm a very passionate person if there's an issue that they find to be at odds with their worldview it causes them to it causes them to like be shocked it like it strips their identity almost and they're like what I'm no longer welcome in this community. And then they seek out other, they seek out other places where they can get this kind of, um, they, they look for another hug box basically. And there is a, there are a lot, there are plenty of anti Hassan communities out there. Obviously the number one, uh, is, is the number one anti Hassan community has been the cult that it has been cyber stalking and meticulously, meticulously logging every moment that they can use uh through all of the political things that i've talked about to to just basically create like haters in every in every sector chronically online people that behave in a cultish way that um will change their political opinions on a whim as long as they're um as long as their their divorcelli uh god decides to change his perspective I know this because he had a dramatic perspective shift since 2018 when I first met him. Over the course of the past six years, he has gone back on a litany of positions that he argued for with passion. Okay. Serious question. Do these trolls do this for free? Yes. Yes. Why was that? Why mine changed? I don't know. I, I don't know what a person's personal motivations are. This is going to be every stream until the election. We're 13 away. Day, we're 13 days away from the election. It's all internet drama bullshit. I know. I just felt it. I, I felt the need to, you know, clear certain things, like to clarify certain things, considering that I'm getting, you know, a, a barrage of slander. After watching so much shit, I want to just say thank you. I don't care about specific American policies, not from there, but the way you break down policies and re reference actual journalists is so commendable. Appreciate you caring much about the world. I don't know if it matters, but I'm referencing you in my master thesis. Sorry for brain rot, just ruining chat. I don't think I've ever seen anyone get hated as much as you do. Like I stayed away from your content since 2020 because everyone was always ranting about how problematic you are and other bull to find out you're just advocating for human rights. Yes. When you are depressed, stuff like this gives you a sense of being in a community, but long term, this will just harm your existence. Yeah. That's what I also try to explain to people uh, in general that like this kind of like this kind of, of championing for someone else, like an internet content creator that doesn't know you and fighting their battles like this is not going to make your life better. It's just simply going to 
increase the toxicity in your life. Most people do not have the time to watch an entire stream or to fully comprehend what my worldview is. And therefore they often, they just often make up their own mind. They see like a bunch of people being like, this guy sucks. And then they go, okay, maybe this guy sucks. I don't even fault them for it. I don't even care necessarily. If they also did not dramatically change their worldview and start advocating uh, and start advocating for like white people being able to say the N word or whatever the, f it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't matter to me as much. Like if someone is pro Palestine unconditionally, right? If someone is pro Palestine unconditionally, but they have issues with me in general, I think that that anger is most likely misguided and misplaced, but it doesn't matter. Jake Tapper just said Bernie Sanders is doing an interview on Discord with Valkyrie and Pokemon. Yeah, it's true. If anything, it's also an indication of how much this community touches grass for sure. I mean, there's plenty who don't touch grass in this community as well. Let's be real. But last sentence on the bottom of my effort post, please. What was it? When you shit on the rainbow flag was the point of my journey where I realized I'm not immune to being reactionary. It's funny because it's a stupid reason to be upset with you talking about how tier its colors are. We disagree on a lot of topics and that's okay. I will never say farting on planes is okay, but understand that planes are loud. So maybe everyone does it and you're the only one brave enough to say it out loud. Yeah, that's the other side. I mean, that person is joking, but like there can be a bunch of things that you disagree with me on. The point is, bro, your take on Ukraine was so bad. You lost a lot of people there for a moment. See, like people are still rehashing this shit. No, I was wrong to assume that Russia, specifically Vladimir Putin, would do such an unimaginably insane thing, an unimaginably insane thing that is ultimately harming Russian lives as well as Ukrainian lives. I'm saying that, like, obviously, Putin should at the very least care to a certain degree about his own self-governance. So, like, if you at this point still think that you know, uh, that I am, you said you didn't care about the Ukrainian constitution. Yeah. I care about human lives. I care about sparing human lives. I care about making sure that Ukrainians don't die in the meat grinder. What do you mean? Like, again, do you think I don't care about the sum total of like Ukrainian sovereignty? I do. I think it's unconscionable and completely unjustifiable that Russia invaded Ukraine. There has never been a moment there's never been a moment where I've considered that to be acceptable or appropriate. And yet you still are pointing to something that is like you're in the community of a person who has fundraised for Ukrainian victims of Russia's unjustifiable war. Someone who is, you know, OK, you learned a lot. I said for a moment, no, dog. You misunderstood my point that I was making. I don't even remember exactly what this was in context to. But like, again, you're doing the thing. Take on Ukraine wasn't wrong. We're probably too early for most of us to take. That has happened. That is what happened to me for a while. Alman DeLorean says the issue is so many people have with you is that you point out the double standards and flaws within the hegemony we all live in. Most streamers and con content creators and streamers are Western chauvinistic, and you're one of the few large creators that actively battle that. It's about bigotry, white supremacy, and better than thou attitudes. Yes, I think that plays a big role. Do you ever admit you were wrong on anything? Yes, always. Anyway.